Many people wrongly think that after 476 AD, the traditional date for the fall of the Western Roman Empire, all Roman institutions just vanished because they were overrun by barbarians and then everything collapsed. This is at least how the fall of the Roman Empire is often wrongly portrayed in movies and media in general. But in reality this is far from the truth and paradoxically the Senate of Rome, this old illustrious order, would even rise in power and popularity after what is often wrongly called the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. We will be surprised to see that the Roman Senate survived the deposition of the last Western Roman Emperor by more than a century. But when and how did the Roman Senate then disappear and of course why? Let us try to find out what happened to the last senators of Rome. It is said that the Senate of Rome was created by Romulus himself, Rome's legendary first king, the order initially consisting of 100 men. The word Senate itself derives from the Latin word senex, meaning old man, which implies that only old and distinguished men could become senators. Already in the Roman kingdom, the Senate held impressive powers. It served as the king's council, it held the executive power, and it served as a legislative body in concert with the people of Rome and to elect new kings. This was the state for 250 years until the last king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, was banished from Rome. Then, during the time of the Roman Republic, the Senate played the central role in the day-to-day -day functionality of the constitution. It consisted of the most experienced politicians making foreign and military policy and directing domestic policy. It also issued instructions to all magistrates, which were the highest offices, namely consuls, praetors, censors, quaestors and aediles. So the Senate naturally held a lot of power during the time of the Roman Republic. But as we know, the Republic became unstable in the late 2nd century BC and finally collapsed in the 1st century BC into open civil wars. This is the time which has been portrayed in countless movies. The tales of Pompey and Caesar, of Crassus and Marcus Antonius are very famous and I don't think that I need to go into a lot of detail about them here. Suffice it to say that we all know how it ended. Octavian made himself princeps senatus, the first among equals as it was said and thus he became the first emperor. This basically would mark the beginning of the decline of the power of the Roman Senate. During the first century AD already, the Principate would at times show its true side. Namely, that was a continuation of the Roman Republic only in name, but in reality the Princeps became the Emperor, Imperator, and thus could essentially overrule the Senate in all matters. Already Caligula and Domitian had clashes with the Senate and some senators were supposedly even executed on orders of some of these tyrannical emperors. Then the emperor's authority was enhanced even more since they commanded the Praetorian Guard and not seldomly would the emperor misuse this guard to harass the senate into obedience. We can thus see that the authority of the senate greatly diminished. However, the appointing of a new emperor still had to be formally acknowledged by the Senate for the first 250 years of the Roman Empire. But even that power was taken from the Senate of Rome, first already with Emperor Aurelian, but then later even more so by the Emperor Diocletian. By that time, the Senate of Rome had largely degraded into an administrative body whose authority only stretched around the city of Rome itself. The Senate had legislative powers over the public games in Rome and over the senatorial order itself of course, also to hold treason cases and to elect some magistrates, but that also often only with permission of the emperor. And so it would stay for over a hundred years until gradually the power of the Senate would return. For instance, Eugenius was a Roman senator who became Western Roman Emperor in 392. And then, even more interestingly, in the last 25 years of the Western Roman Empire, the Senate would see its power increase even more again, 
which is quite paradoxical because we would assume that with the empire's decline, the power of the Senate will also decline. But the contrary was the case. Petronius Maximus, for instance, who became emperor in 455, was a Roman senator, as was Olybrius in 472. Especially in those last 25 years, the Senate got again involved more and more in imperial affairs in Italy, which was not good for the empire, as I will explain in another video, because the Roman senators would often want to see their own interests fulfilled, even if it was to the detriment of the weakened late Western Roman Empire. After what is wrongly called the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, the senators' power rose even more. As paradoxical as this may sound, many senators supported Odoacer over the usurper Orestes and Romulus Augustus, and hence, when Odoacer took over power, for them it was business as usual, as had already been the case when Ricimer held power. Many Roman senators held high offices under Odoacer, and the same was also true later under Theoderic. In those times, the princeps senatus the head of the Senate, often even served as the right hand of Odoacer and Theoderic. And if you are like me, a total Rome nerd or Romaboo as some people like to say, and I think that you are or else you probably wouldn't be watching this video, then you might be interested in the incredible rings and other Roman accessories which the SPQR shop is building. They make legionary rings, they make rings with different themes, they even make coin replicas, statues, pendants, attributes and terracottas. And the most incredible thing is that they handcraft every single piece. That's right, this is really high quality handcrafted material. There's really no better present for yourself or someone you know who might be a Rome fan. I put the link to their shop in the video description and into the pinned comment. And with this link, you can now even get a 20% rebate for every purchase. I repeat, a 20% price reduction for every purchase from the SPQR shop, which is just an absolutely insane offer. And you can only get it here via the Majorianus link, because let me tell you, the people from SPQR shop also are absolute fans of the heroic Emperor Majorian. So go and check out their incredible sortiment. There will be certainly also something for you. Sometimes the Senate had as much authority as to overrule Theoderic himself on some issues. For instance, in 498, Pope Laurentius was installed as the highest priest of the Roman Church, despite Theoderic and Emperor Anastasius favoring Symmachus. Some senators even secretly conspired with the emperor in Constantinople, and we can certainly imagine that some of them had dreams of restoring the Western Roman Empire in some form. Boetius and Symmachus paid with their lives because they were accused of exactly that, conspiring with the Eastern Emperor against the Ostrogothic king Theoderic. And so the relations between Constantinople and the Ostrogothic rulers worsened and even more so after Theoderic's death, until at some point the brutal Gothic war broke out. This was possibly one of the most devastating wars of late antiquity, and I would even go as far as to say that after that war, the early Middle Ages had arrived in Italy. So total was the destruction. And logically, this would also have severe effects onto the Roman Senate. Had the city of Rome still been impressive before the outbreak of the Gothic Wars, with many buildings still repaired and maintained by the Senate and the urban prefect, the Gothic War brutally decimated not only the population of Rome and severely damaged the city, but many senators were taken as hostages in 552 and killed as revenge for the death of the Ostrogothic king Totila at the hands of the Eastern Romans. And the ones that were not killed certainly had seen the devastation coming and had fled to Constantinople when the Gothic War started in 536. After the complete destruction of the Ostrogothic kingdom, the city of Rome became formally again part of the Roman Empire with the emperor in Constantinople the same as it had been 200 years earlier, when for instance Constantius II or Theodosius were ruling from Constantinople. But now 
the divide between East and West had grown even more. The cultural estrangement had increased. And Justinian was very paranoid, fearing that some Western senator or consul would proclaim himself emperor and try to restore the Western Roman Empire. The fact that Belisarius had feigned to become Western Roman Emperor in 540 certainly didn't help in making Justinian less paranoid. And so after 552, when the now depopulated and damaged Rome became again part of the Roman Empire, Justinian ordered not only the office of Western Consul to be discontinued, but also the power of the Roman Senate to be severely reduced. Many senators who had fled the Gothic Wars had little desire anyways to return to a now depopulated and desolated Rome, when they could stay in Constantinople, which was flourishing in those times. They were enjoying a great lifestyle there, in an impressive classical Roman city, whereas Rome was now beginning to decay ever faster. Even the baths of Rome had ceased to work when the Goths had cut the aqueducts in the siege of 537 AD. Why would one want to live in desolate Rome when one could live in luxurious Constantinople? And please consider supporting this channel via Patreon or YouTube membership because I really need your help in order to be able to continue this work on late Roman history. Without your support, I don't know how much longer I can continue this channel because as you can imagine, the YouTube algorithm does not exactly push a niche topic such as late Roman history. Alternatively, you can help this channel by buying my merch directly here on YouTube. I have created a merch store with some cool or funny or weird late Roman merch, which you can buy directly here via YouTube in the video description. Thank you very much. And so very few, only the staunchest, the most hardcore traditionalist senators returned to Rome, who still had a strong sense of nostalgia for the old idea that once was Rome. They would be senators in a depopulated, decaying city, bereft of any real power, because the emperor at Constantinople feared this old ancient order, and so the senate would just have the power to do some mundane administrative work in Rome. But even in 580, some senators were still left. It is noted that in that year, Roman senators sent envoys to Constantinople giving the Emperor Tiberius II 3,000 pounds of gold, bidding him for help against the Lombards who had invaded Italy in 568. The invasion of the Lombards had made the situation in Rome even worse than it already was, which lowered the motivation of senators to return to Rome and resume this ancient office even more, with the constant threat of the city being sacked by these Germanic people. So now we understand that the motivation for someone from an old noble Roman aristocratic family to return to Rome and resume the office of senator was already really low. But the list of things that reduced that motivation does not even end here, because their authority would be reduced even further. The Pope would now become ever more powerful and compete with the Senate for power. And then the office of the Exarch was created in 584, where basically the Exarch would be the vice-regent of the Emperor at Constantinople. But the Exarch resided at Ravenna and not in Rome. So therefore the power of the Roman Senate was lessened even more. And as if that wasn't enough, a huge flood of the Tiber hit Rome in 589 and not only caused a lot of destruction, but also caused hygiene to deteriorate. And so the plague hit Rome in 590, making the situation that had already been extremely desolate even more desolate. We can assume that some senators must have fallen victim to that disease, and after the plague had ravaged the city, only 30,000 people remained in Rome, a city that had once a million inhabitants. The last mention of the Senate of Rome was in 603 AD when in its last very inglorious officially known act, the Senate of Rome commissioned a new statue of the brutal usurper Phocas and his wife Leontia onto a column of a previous tetrarch in the Forum Romanum, a very questionable act 
since Phocas is possibly one of the most brutal and worst Roman emperors ever and a big reason why the Roman Empire would lose much of its territory in the following decades. So in 603, there still must have been some utterly hardcore super traditionalist senators convening in the old Curia Julia in the Forum Romanum. By that time, it must have already been a pitiful sight. Some old men in rugged old togas, barely a few of them left, convening in semi-dilapidated buildings that had been bereft of their old glory by the many repeated lootings, walking through the old glorious Forum Romanum that was decaying because there simply weren't enough funds and people anymore to repair these old magnificent structures. Powerless to stop the decay and dreaming of old better days, thinking of how glorious it must have been and being reminded of this old glory every day. Then the constant threat of the Lombards and the jealous Eastern Emperor and Exarch and Pope undermining the few remaining senators each and every action. In 618 a brutal earthquake struck Rome and it is my personal theory I have no proof for that, but it makes kind of sense for me that this marked the final end of the Roman Senate. Of this, by that time, 1,371 year old institution. Probably many buildings were damaged in that earthquake and it is no coincidence that only a few years later, in 630, the Curia Julia was converted into a church. So by that time, the Senate must have completely disappeared. Therefore, between 603, the last officially mentioned act of the Senate, and 630, somewhere in those 27 years, the Senate must have disappeared. I think that the earthquake of 618 was that final nail in the coffin, because the last hardcore super traditionalist senators that still remained were either killed in that earthquake, or the Curia Julia, the old Senate Hall, the meeting place of the Senate was damaged badly and since the funds were missing for any repairs, the building was just left utterly desolated. The church was the only remaining authority that had funds left for repairs. But of course the church and the Pope would only be interested in the repairs and restorations of ecclesiastical buildings and not of secular buildings. And so I think that the Curia Julia and many other buildings in the Forum area were simply given up. So therefore I personally think that the earthquake of 618 was the last nail in the coffin for that old illustrious order and I can imagine the last few senators packing up their things, turning their back on this desolated city of Rome and leaving for Constantinople, hoping for a better life there. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because the long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. This channel would not work without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members and I want to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. And if you want to learn more about how Rome was badly damaged over the centuries by earthquakes, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you want to learn more about how the city of Rome must have looked around the time in which the Senate vanished, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.